For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Hey there, enthusiasts. Welcome back to Hero Talk. I'm your host, Judge Greg. Joining me today, I have Nick Kinetic, a writer on Enthusiacs.com. First time I get to say that. Nick, how you doing? I'm all right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's been interesting being able to to, to write for stuff. It's uh, it's a bit of a venting for me. <laughs> all right. So uh, if you go to Enthusiacs.com, it's behind the lines. Is that right? Behind the lines? Uh, behind the line, yeah. Be- behind the line. So that's uh, that's a series of articles that, that Nick puts out there. So uh, give a read. And anyway, we're not talking about articles today. Today we're talking about movies. And our film for today is Street Fighter. And that's the 1994 film starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and Raul Julia. And as always, Hero Talk is a spoiler podcast. And we consider anything that's been released is fair game. So you've all been warned. And we will try our hardest to keep this on topic, but we could go anywhere. If you're a fan of the show, you know that. If you're not, well, hopefully we don't spoil anything too terribly bad for you. But this movie and is from 1994. And hopefully you become a fan of the show. Yeah. Hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll hear more and go back and listen to our other stuff. But as I said, this is like a 1994 film, so I'm not super worried about spoiling it for anybody. I don't think anyone would care either. May- maybe not. Um, I-, I will say that after doing The Legend of Chun-Li, this one was a very, very refreshing take on street foot like sometimes you think you're trying to be too smart maybe you just need to be dumb and yeah. just just let it go so we got um so this movie was written and directed by uh, uh steven de souza i think that's how you say it mm. this was actually his uh his feature film directorial debut 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 is not a word <laughs> no it's not but debut is and this was his uh he had written like a lot of actiony stuff uh, including uh, following this, he actually wrote uh, Judge Dredd, which of course is another favorite of mine. So uh, one yeah. we'll have to get to sooner or later. Yeah, one that we absolutely have to get to sooner or later because come on, <laughs> if I don't do Dredd and Judge Dredd on Hero Talk, something is terribly wrong. But I, um, you know, there's a lot in this film that was cheesier and dumber than I remember, and there was a lot in this film that was much better than I I really truly remember it being. Uh, and I, I like right away the thing that sticks out to me is I do not remember loving Raul Julia in this film <laughs> as much as I did now because I watch this now and I lo- I used to once say like it's so sad that this was his last role and now I watch him like Raul Julia knocked it out of the park for this movie the, he <laughs> you could say he was chewing the scenery he was <laughs> he was like unhinged his jaw and yeah. consumed the whole set in one bite yeah he was, there's, there's he chewing, was getting he was, everything out of every single syllable of dialogue that he had just go back and listen i don't think there is a single line that he wasn't hamming it up to to freaking infinity it's amazing I mean, it's. I don't want to keep pointing fingers at Legend of Chun Li and saying you did it wrong. Although you should. Yeah. Although I could, and I likely will. But I mean, this is. You know, not like in the last film where like you spend the whole time going like, so is this is this guy really Bison? Is is Bison really Irish? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Neil McDonough's there, and you're like, it's. I don't know if I'm really getting it. And then Rel Julie comes on the scene, and he just shows up. And be like, oh, that's Bison. I know Bison. <laughs> That man is General M. Bison. There is no question in my mind who he is. He, he may not necessarily physically look the part, but mm-hmm. it didn't really matter so much because, boy, did he act the part. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. Plus, oh, yeah. you know, and I don't know exactly how tall Raul Julie is. He looked physically intimidating. His suit certainly um, yeah. enhanced that. Right. And, and, you know, you hate to bring it down because we're on a high note right now but like at the time he was uh he was uh struggling with stomach cancer Mm -hmm. so he actually was not you know a very physically fit because he was he was quite sick um and and, you know a little pale and gaunt which is you know was not makeup some of that was just basically because he was he was in the in the throes of of fighting cancer uh but despite that when, when he shows up and he's squaring off against somebody you just he looked quite menacing and yeah he, he was able to pull it off he he certainly was and i was i i 
I can't say enough good things about him in this film because I I, I loved him in it. I absolutely I mean, every scene even, he was in, I was entertained. Even more than that, I mean, the reason he took the job in the first place was he knew it was going to be his last film. He knew mm-hmm. it wasn't going to be able to last much longer. Yeah, and he let his kids pick the final project, and they thought this would be cool. So he was really doing it for his kids, which yeah. is sweet. And on top of that. He did it to make a lot of money to mm-hmm. take care of his kids. So yeah. I mean, it's it, it's really kind of touching when you look at it that way. Yeah. It's so it's it's kind of nice that you know we were able to to see it, and it was very. I mean, it was e- extremely well taken for his uh his role in it. And I mean, he never got to see the reception to it. He actually, I think, died a couple of months before the film was released. Uh, and the film was dedicated to his memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I just I. I loved Raul Julie in this. Now, somebody I didn't love as much in this was, was Jean Claude Van Damme. Now, I get it; it's 1994, so Jean Claude Van Damme is going to be in this movie. It's, <laughs> that happens. Uh, I just, I don't know. I first of all, I and there's, there's maybe there's a little bit of a, a dissonance here between because in in Street Fighter lore, and this movie came out when I was actually pretty into Street Fighter, so I'm relatively well versed in the stories of the people behind most of the characters that were in this film. Unlike the last time we watched one where I had to keep asking you if that really happened. <laughs> Fortunately, Raul Julia didn't go into the... the evil the, cave? Yeah, the evil cave. The uh, em- return to the Empire Strikes Back cave and <laughs> <laughs> have to confront his evil self there or stick his hands inside anybody. He was just... what I. Oh, you know what? I gotta go back to this thing about Bison. What I liked about him <laughs> is as they're talking about, like, I'm not evil. Like, I'm, I, I'm trying to do you a favor. This is good, what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, what I love! The, the, the great thing about that speech mm-hmm. was it was right after they were looking at the model of his yeah. city, Bisonopolis, mm-hmm. and he was saying, "This will be the, the this great achievement of humanity." But I think the food court needs to be fixed. <laughs> <picked. laughs> All the major franchises are going to want in. Yeah, he's he was looking out. He was a visionary, and he knew what was going on. Uh, yeah, I did not like Jean Claude Van Damme. Now you have all these characters, and they hail from their different countries. And, you, you know, you have to try to at least make people look like they're from that country. So, but, I mean, everyone was, it was like a mismatch. You had, I mean, you had a Samoan playing a Japanese guy. You had a Belgian guy playing an American guy. You had an Australian playing an English person. I mean, it was, it, they basically came down to, like, if they kind of look the part, they went with it. <laughs> Well, to to I mean mm-hmm. to to roll with that, they actually wound up making some some of the weird things in the game actually look decent, like Balrog's hair. Yes, uh, as much as I love Michael Clark Duncan, and I do, uh, Grand L. Bush looked more like Balrog. Yes, than than Mike Duncan did. Mike Duncan looked like a big scary dude mm-hmm. who they called Balrog. Um, although what I don't understand is why would Balrog need his physical boxing gloves on <laughs> like or, where did he even matter, get those they come from yeah like <laughs> for 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 ryu and ken it was kind of like they put him in the training gear they decided yeah. just to keep the training gear on the whole time and the pads on their hands for some reason but balrog's like where did you even find boxing gloves and why are you st- wearing them it doesn't make i mean other than because they wanted to make people at least look like they were in the movie to the point where yeah, Remember when Honda's shirt got ripped to kind of make exactly. it look like his? I was gonna say. Yeah, Zangief is like he got he got bald and his chain was ripped off towards the end to make him look like or Dalsum. Yeah, Zangief yeah. got naked at some point for whatever reason, just because he had to wear your trunks. Yeah, he was. That was just in the fight with Honda. Yeah, which is a wonderful Godzilla reference. <laughs> Actually, I kind of laughed a little bit. I forgot all about that that joke. <laughs> um. So yeah, so Jean Claude Van who's I I don't know. It's I didn't so much like him as Guile. He, but... he, uh... <laughs> it's a really tricky thing to look at because he he actually has the physicality pretty much just right. It's yeah. just really hard to listen to him talk. And kind of the only thing you can think of is, okay, Guile is a first-generation immigrant, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I, I suppose. You know, and it happens an awful lot is that a lot of people who are trying to become citizens uh, will join the uh, the U.S. military because mm-hmm. that's a very quick route to citizenry. I mean, and I'm not trying to make political commentary. Uh, I actually kind of agree with that, though. I think like, hey, once you're willing to serve in the army, uh, you get to be a citizen. Yeah. I mean, honest, honestly, I don't I don't really see why there's a question at that point. But yeah, so 
So I, I kind of let it go with that. Raul Julia, of course, he's uh, he's Puerto Rican, and he played Bison from Shadowloo, which I completely had forgotten is a country in this movie. It's not exactly an overt thing. They just kind of, like, draw it out on a map and they call it Shadowloo, and there's yeah. a... Or is it a Shadowloo City or something like there, that? The Shadowloo City, I think, is is the capital, but they they say Shadowloo is the country in Southeast Asia at one point. Mm. So they're kind of drawing from, like, the fact that he was from Thailand... So they put it in Southeast Asia, but they kind of made it its own its own country thing. Which mm. you know what? I, remember, we we have very recently seen the Legend of Chun Li. So at that point, I'm like, as long as they're not calling it Shadow Lao, you can make it whatever you want. <laughs> calling it the right thing, and that's what's most important. Um, another guy that I, I got to call out from the cast is the guy who played played Ryu. He looked so familiar to me. So Byron Mann is his name, and so the reason he looks so familiar is because he's been in like a hundred things that I've I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so Byron Mann so in addition to, to this which was pretty good and he had a quick role on Smallville which I I probably saw because I did watch Smallville for a while uh he was on Dark Angel if you remember that show I never watched it yeah it was I I, I caught a couple of them but yeah that's why he looked familiar there um oh what else was he in uh he he was in Big Burn Notice in one of those in one of the uh, episodes there, and I've seen all of Burn Notice more than once. Uh, he was uh, very recently. I saw him in The Man with the Iron Fists. Hmm. Uh, I actually just watched that just a few months ago. Um, not for a hero talk, so don't get all excited out there. I just you know, watched it because I do watch movies. Uh, he was uh, he's on Arrow. Who's first... he in Arrow? Or maybe I didn't get to that. Uh, Yao Fei. Oh, from the uh, huh. from the flashbacks. On the island. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that was him. So I'm like, oh, no, this guy looks so familiar. Apparently, I've been in a ton of stuff I've seen recently. <laughs> so he played a right. Now, the Ryu and Ken dynamic. Now, Ken played by uh, Damien Chapa. And I, I can't remember anything Damien Chapa's been in. I went to his IMDb page and nothing rang a bell. I, I mean, I would literally nothing. So I don't know what else he yeah. I lugged. I liked their dynamic. Now, I, I, yeah, their interaction with each other, at least their place yeah. in the story, was really weird. Well, most people's place in the story was really weird. They they Some tried more to, than others, yeah, though. they tried so hard to keep people true to their origin story, but to get them in the same place at the same time, so they could feature all the characters from from the game at the time, which was which, uh, to be super fair, is a pretty tricky t- uh, tricky thing to do. Yeah, I mean, so you have some people who maybe, like, T-Hawk didn't really get a fair shake because he was just sort of there. Yeah. Um, same with Cammy, and uh, she didn't get a whole lot to do. They they cut a whole Cammy fight scene out of the film. Huh. She had a... Now, there's a reason they, they cut it out, is because either Cammy and Chun-Li had a fight at the... Uh, I should, I should. Is at the circus accurate? Was it actually at a circus, or were they just performing for Bison? But they were doing a circus yeah. show at the yeah. weapons, uh, like um, yeah, at, at the weapons flea deal. market thing, yeah. which like you do at the weapons flea market, you put on circus. No, but she uh she had a scene. It was really awkward. Like she just kind of walks in on Chun Li while she's setting up the bomb, and it's like, "What are you doing here? What did you do with Ken and Ryu? I let them go. You're coming with me." And then there's this really brief fight. And then Chun Li beats Cammy and runs away. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so like, well, it I, does, I can yeah. see why you cut that. It's, yeah, it just wasn't gonna work. Um, Chun Li should mention, played by Ming Na Wen, uh, is now, a terrible newscaster. A, a horrible newscaster. Decent Chun Li. Yep. Uh, now other people may know her. She's uh, she played Mulan, as, as we mentioned in a previous one of these. Um, she played Mulan. She reprised that role on an episode of Sophia the First. So so there's that. She's done a lot of voice work. Uh, I think she's uh, she's voiced Mulan in a couple things. She's been in a couple of cartoons. Uh, she's recently on um, oh that that Marvel show Shield, Agents of Shield. What is it called? Is that Agents of Shield? Agents of Shield. Yeah, she's on Agents of Shield. Uh, she's been on Phineas and Ferb. She's been in. Uh, she was on that show Eureka as a as a couple of a uh, couple of times. So hmm. I never saw that show, but um. Anyway, she, she's she's been in a, in a bunch of stuff, but she was a I, good Chun Li, I would say. I have I have yeah. nothing to say about her role as Chun Li. I actually enjoyed her in the role, except for when she was trying to be a reporter because I didn't buy that at all. But I, I will say that she had one of the weirdest um, little uh, quirks to her outfit was they they got her a red chi pao instead of a blue one. Yeah, did that bother you the way yes. it bothered me? Like everyone else's. 
I shouldn't say everyone else, because since Guile and Cammy are wearing, like, blue camouflage, technically that's their alternate outfit. Yeah. So, I, I shouldn't say not everyone's wearing their alternate outfit, but I mean, like, you know, I can see Bison's wearing red, so they wanted to put her in red, but, like, it really messed with me, because y- you would think you'd make it blue. It's not like they made, like, Ball, or, uh, Va- uh Blanca, the- thank you, Blanca. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go Carlos. through the whole cast there. Carlos Blanca. Oh, this was... Now... This is not the normal Charlie from the game, right? They kind of merged, Correct. like, this is this was Chris Klein's character merged well, with another was, guy. This was made before Charlie was an in-universe character, and it was, he was just mentioned okay. in, a, uh, in an ending. Although, they t- to make Charlie and Blanca the same character, they did kind of smash all over Blanca's right. uh, stated um origins right but it's it's very hard to take a young child who was marooned in the middle of the uh the brazilian Brazil. rainforest and then raised by electric eels or something i don't <laughs> i i don't okay Th- there's no way to take that guy and put him in shadow loo yeah there's, so you make it work so they they just kind of made carlos blanca the guy um so this this is a funny scene. I thought about this when I just saw it. Although he was from Brazil, yeah, he was from Brazil. So they at least he, got he that had part the Brazilian right. patch on his uh, Allied mm-hmm. Nations uniform. Yeah. So the attention to detail, I have to say, on stuff like that was a little refreshing. Surprising. I think the word is surprising. Yeah. I was. I'll say refreshing. It was refreshing, given that we just saw a movie that didn't really care about the attention to detail. And yet that one, it's weird. They're like negatives of each other. The Chun, the Legend of Chun Li put in a bunch of little things that did not add up and didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And Street Fighter put in a bunch of details that were more oddly more respectful of the source material (laughs) and take you by surprise. Yeah. Yeah. There was, um, yeah, I just, uh, I don't really like how they, how they did the blanket thing. And there's that scene right at the beginning where, you know, like Bison brings out like the, the three peacekeepers, from the Allied Nations, totally not the United Nations, and they were going to get sued if they used them. They were, United yeah, Nations. they were going to get sued, even though, like, I mean, they they were wearing exactly United Nations uniforms, like even down to the blue hats and everything. So, the, you know, it when I saw this as a kid, mm-hmm. that actually confused me. It's like, <laughs> why why didn't they just call it the United Nations? What is the Allied? Because it seems so obvious, right? That what is the Allied Nations actually a thing that I've just never heard of? Yeah, it, the first couple of times I hear them say A-N, I'm like, what, did, am I hearing this wrong? Like, am I, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so Bison takes these, like, these, are, these couple of guys, and he kills the first two ever so easily, just uh, for sport, I guess, and then, then he gets the message from, from Guile, ooh, horrible plan maker Guile is, he's like, he took the bait, trace the call, you don't want to be ready to trace that <laughs> before you bait him? Oh, whatever. Um, then he says, like, okay, it, you know, you hang in there, Charlie. Like, okay, first of all, it, did, have you not learned that? You never do that. <laughs> you know, you just, you just put this guy, like, honestly, this homeboy is now going to be experimented on because of you. Because you told him to hang in there. And second, how lucky is it for Bison that he wasn't one of the two guys he already just killed before he checked their name tags? <laughs> and Carlos Blanca. That's a pretty big jump to go from Carlos to Charlie. <laughs> well... Guile did point out that uh, Charlie was in there, and I, I would actually kind of understand that, but yeah. still. It's... I would understand if he had taken the time to check the other two guys, make sure there wasn't a Charles in there, but <laughs> that's okay with it. You know, it's a very special relationship that Guile and Charlie had, given that Guile we apparently. We got five seconds of uh, yeah. nostalgic footage. <laughs> well, I think it's more important that, that Guile keeps that nostalgic footage on him. So that he can pop it into video players on experimental boats if he ever needs to. <laughs> okay, okay, this is that boat just made something snap in me when I was watching. It's like, oh my god, you know what this movie is? It's a Saturday afternoon adventure show like yeah. Thunder in Paradise. It, I, you know, the thing about Thunder in Paradise though is that when you have a stealth boat, this is what's driving me nuts. Why would you make a stealth boat that was invisible to the naked eye, but still detectable by radar? It wasn't supposed to be detectable by radar. They just shot the radar stations. What, wasn't it? Is it, Okay, so it wasn't, because <laughs> yeah. it was shaped like something that shouldn't be detectable by radar, and that made me kind of wonder, like, why are you shooting the radar stations? Like, they wouldn't know nope, anything was going on unless you started shooting these things. That makes no sense at all. Again, a Guile just doesn't know how to plan very well. Uh, the then there was the jail jailbreak stage that they did. Oh yeah, that Where, that was a hell. 
Did any of the guards know that they were going to do that? Yeah, I was because wondering, they, like, they, how many people they were are using get live shot. ammo? Yeah, they were I using know. live ammo on the truck because there were sparks coming off the truck. Right. So, and then, and then why didn't? Because Guile jumped in front of the truck. Ken, mm-hmm. they showed Ken picked up a thing, a, a, a pistol off the guy who jumped on the truck. Yeah. So, so that's that where guy must have been in on it, right? In it. Yeah. Yeah. But then Guile just jumps out in front of the truck to have like a firefight with Ken and he shoots Guile. And why doesn't the truck run over Guile? I don't know. Oh, man. What a. I actually had yeah. to go back and forth several times to make sure I understood. No, Guile was in front of the truck, right? Yeah. No, that was a pretty, pretty weak premise right there. And I'll give it that. Um, I mean, this this was the guy who wrote Die Hard, so he doesn't think too hard. Um, and Die Hard 2. I shouldn't critique Die Hard. Die Hard's actually a pretty decent film, but Die, Die Hard 2 was not as good. So, and it, But that was a terribly executed plan. I'll give that. And so here's... Did you, did you pick up on this? So Chun-Li decides, when, after Chun-Li puts a tracker on it, um, and they realize their tracker is being jammed by another tracker, and so they used an oscilloscope to figure out where the other tracker was pointing to, because that's not how that works. <laughs> And she figures I, out it's on the base, so she sneaks in, and there she finds Guile still playing dead right yeah, next to Yeah, that was just insane. <laughs> He's Oh my god, it's Guile, he's dead. Put the thing over him, then he gets up. Yeah. Like, so they took they took dead dead Guile, quote unquote dead Guile. So obviously whoever did this must have known what was going on, right? Because Yeah. They they wheel him into the room where all the tracking equipment is. <laughs> and then they I guess they leave him there under the sheet, and he's just still laying there. I, the, the the best guess I can have is that he was in there watching the tracking equipment, heard Chun Li coming in. It's like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be dead. <laughs> right, but the, wouldn't you question like, why did they take Guile here? This is an equipment room. <laughs> why would they even stick him in here? She's a terrible reporter. She is a terrible reporter. Well, apparently the whole thing was just a ruse, just to get close to Bison. Yeah, kind of like how they had the double ruse with uh, Rue and Ken at the uh, at the weapons deal. Yeah. I kind of liked Ruin Ken at the weapons deal when like, they stumble in and they, they try to talk the two sides and not killing each other. <laughs> and then they just, they point out Chun Li and what a horrible plan. So Chun Li, fortunately for them, Chun Li decided to give her own plan away with plenty of time for everyone to get out of the hut. That, that, that whole sequence is one that I don't think they knew where they were going. They just knew they wanted to get a certain thing done. They're like, eh, just go with it. Right, because they're all like, oh, you warned us of Chun-Li. Like, technically, they warned you of Chun-Li after Chun-Li warned you of Chun-Li. Chun-Li well, also, already showed they also, you. Yeah. They, they, they walked into the whole thing speaking loudly, saying, uh, she says the whole place is going to blow in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So they, they kind of, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Again, that's not one you... There are certain things in this movie that you shouldn't spend too much time thinking about, but at the same time, this is not a movie that presents itself as something that you watch for the intricate wheelings and dealings of the yeah. characters. You're, you're not going to be too mentally stimulated. Um, however, it does great line by Zangief when they're watching the truck coming towards him. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> he's a quick, change the channel. <laughs> because he's watching it on the TV yeah. as the, the truck with the right. dynamite is rolling toward them. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, and it is it is sold so well because you have <laughs> everyone a, just looks at everyone like, looks at him like it was th- having that kind of humor in it. I think is good for it because you have you have Sagat and uh, or Sagat. Is it how am I supposed to say that? Is it Sagat? I think it's Sagat. Yeah, Sagat and Ryu and Ken all turn and look at the guy like and DJ was DJ, DJ there? Yeah. Oh, DJ was there. Yeah. So was Vega. It was I, it was a little arbitrary like who they had people aligned with. Given that they were fairly, they they played pretty fast and loose with their uh with their origins to get them all in the same place. But it's like Balrog's on the good guy side, and Vega is apparently like Sagat's guy. And I th- I think DJ's what they were the doing, they basically the the main thing was they swapped DJ and Balrog for the hero and villain side, and I think the reason they did that was so that. Balrog and Honda could both be, oh, Shadaloo destroyed our sporting careers, and that's why they're working with Chin Lei. Yeah, by the, the Shadow Lutong, who apparently yeah. do this with their spare time as ruin people's sporting careers. Well, he didn't want to take a dive, I guess. Something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. They might have taken him out like Daredevil's dad and shot him in that case. Yeah. 
I said spoilers, people. I we could go anywhere. And plus, that's Daredevil's been around for like thirty some years. You probably should know that by now. <laughs> if you care about Daredevil, which you should, because this new this new uh, series on Netflix is pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I I had to put off watching the series so that I could watch this movie so I could do this hero talk. So that's that's what I do. That's for you dedication, people. people. That's right. That's what I do for you. Um, Hey, how nice was it that Vega looked like Vega? That was actually quite striking because because this is the first I think this is the first character you see in their full game get up. And yeah. it's pretty early in the movie. And not only does he look a hell of a lot like game Vega, good claw, good mask, mm -hmm. snake tattoo all around the matador tights and everything. Before the fight starts, he even did a backflip. Yes. Like, not even a, a stage backflip where they, like, cut halfway through so mm -hmm. you can, yeah. you know, muck with the motion. No, he was just wide shot. He just stood there and did a backflip and held his hand up in celebration, just like in the game. Yeah, I, it was, I mean, straight up, exactly like the Vega in the game. Um, Minus the hair color, which varies in the game anyway, but I don't care about that part. Yeah, it's that, that part doesn't bother me so much. So again, I looked up this guy's IMDB page, because it's what I do to prepare for these things, and here's the only thing that he's done that I have ever seen was he was a voice of a pedestrian and a background character in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> That's it. That's the kind of billing that they might have just had the same name and people miscategorized it. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's like that's... Especially because I don't think he had a line of dialogue in this movie. I think he said some stuff. I think right. he did some talking, um, but no, nothing memorable, obviously. And uh, I think he's the only character who straight up died in that explosion at the Shadowloo City. Because huh. they they establish now I'm I'm taking a couple jumps of logic here because they established Sagat got out yeah and Scott was in the same there. room with Vega but Vega was still in there and knocked unconscious so I mean he's probably dead hmm. uh, even Bison survived it yep yeah I uh, true story never ever watched all the way to the stinger before you you know what that stinger was for what was it for it was to set up the Street Fighter cartoon show really yep it, that this shares the world with that and. That makes me very happy that this movie exists, because if not, we wouldn't have the just treasure trove mm -hmm. of comedy. Oh. Was, was Vega in the Street Fighter cartoon the street, show? I believe so. Oh, so he did survive. That's nice. Well, in the Street Fighter cartoon show, uh, DJ was a good guy and Balrog was a bad guy, so... Oh, well, so... They, they did swap things around, but I mean... If you haven't, look up, uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but if you look up like Street Fighter Defenders of Stupidity, it's just a bunch of clips from the cartoon show that are so amazingly just stupid and bad. It's it's massive comedy. Yeah, like I You might hurt that. yourself laughing at it. Right. I just want to point out one thing. Uh, Jay Tavare, I think it's Tavare. I don't actually know, and I, I apologize. Um, so he did do a movie, Pathfinder, that people seem to like, so it's not like he's never done anything good. Mm. Um, but he is uh, going to be in the upcoming film, The Human Centipede Three. So, so there we go. Top bill. No, he's inmate three four six. <laughs> so, all right, nowhere to go but up, buddy. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh man, talk about what a waste of talent. He seems like he'd be a good actor. Uh, so I, who haven't we really touched on? Uh, Dalsam. This is this is what the crazy <laughs> thing of a movie like this is. We're talking th basically you just go through the cast of who all the different characters from Street Fighter <laughs> because there's so many people. Dalsam is a, was a scientist. Um, who now am I supposed to believe when he lost all his hair? It's because all those chemicals spilled on him during the fight when uh, it, Blanca was uh, the released. Chemicals spilling on him, I think, was supposed to explain future stretchiness. Okay. Uh, the I mean, he also lost his shirt, so it might have burned off in the explosion <laughs> yeah. or something. They definitely know. did not explain how he lost his shirt. Nope. No. That uh. Yeah, but Dalton there happened. was yeah. the uh, the scientist that uh, Bison had conscripted to do brainwashing work on his human right. weapon program, and was just <laughs> it's it's. I loved the exchange at the beginning when they were establishing what this program was, and he's saying, you know, my work is being perverted, it's terrible, and Bison says, tell you what, after I take over the world, we'll see about getting you published. <laughs> that, that should was... cheer you up. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I remember that. That was, 
That was a good... Oh, man. I cannot say enough good stuff about Royal Julia. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going back to that. How awesome is that line? He's like, get you published. There you go. Da, 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 da. I'm There's so many thing. of those exchanges that he has in the movie, though. Yeah, it's... I mean, how, we haven't even talked about, for me, it was Tuesday. For me, it was Tuesday. The the, the quintessential line bison line in this movie, <laughs> of the entire movie, is, is you know, with the day that bison graced your village it was the single most <laughs> important day of your life. For me... Tuesday and delivered perfectly like not as awful as what I just said there but like delivered it, it was just like eh whatever yeah he's like I, I don't remember you know and Chen Li's describing this horrible thing he's like I, it kind of sounds like a lot of things I did I don't, know. I don't remember any of what you're saying it sounds like me yes <laughs> it's something I would do it's like trying to remember a conversation you had when you were six yeah uh, and then Kylie Minogue's cami basically had nothing to do she was just there because they needed a cami uh, she was there for Guile to... Yeah, she was his to... his his second in command, but she didn't do a whole awful lot. Even in the scene where that... The... Now, here's a, this is a, this was a crazy scene, and I actually have a little bit of insight on the scene, because it was I was watching a... Spe- there was a I'm talking about the scene where the chef guy or the server grabs the knife, runs across the table at Guile in the middle of the meeting, <laughs> and then, you know, Guile, like, kicks him down, kicks punches him, him yeah. breaks his arm, throws him off the table, then asks if there's any other new business. Yeah. Uh... I was watching this special on Foley artists, and they actually showed the Foley a side by side of that scene with like the sound and the Foley artist and that whole scene. This was years and years ago, so that's why I can say with absolute certainty that the sound of his arm crunching when he throws him off the table is celery. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's man, Foley artist. That sounds like it seems like a fun job. It's uh, it's either fun or really frustrating. Yes, probably both. Probably a little bit of both. It's not a job I want, but it's a job I would love to do for like a day. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, that's that's about all I can say about that. But uh, I think I think we've hit everyone in, in in the major people in the cast. Okay. It, we, we didn't really talk too much about the guy who played Blanca, other than he played Blanca, and they just Blanca did not look good in this it, at it, all. There, there wasn't. Yeah, the the facial prosthesis mm-hmm. looked pretty bad. Yeah, because uh, it was all over the brow. And right. For Blanca, it, it really should have been on the jawline more. No, I I, I agree. I think and you could probably have done pretty better. bad too. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Oh, you know who we we haven't quite talked about yet. I totally forgot. We've mentioned the character as a uh, West Study, and I think it's Study again. I apologize. Um, he played Sagat. Oh yeah. That, yeah. Uh, well, it's it's a little indicative of just how they treated Sagat in the movie, where he was another guy who was just kind of around. Yeah. Now they show I mean, him at the a, end. He he's got a the, pivotal point with yeah. the weapons trading, but he didn't have much of an active role in anything. Yeah, I mean, he was there for the the final fight with with Ken. He helped set Ken on his path when he said, "If I didn't meet you, I would have become you." Yeah, so I'm good on him. But he's uh. But anyway, uh, I believe a Native American playing Sagat had the he had the scar on his chest, but it's like they don't explain where it came from, and it really feels I got the like imp- you only yeah. saw that at the end, I think. So I got the impression that was from the explosions. Oh, maybe. I mean, it should have been from from Rue Ryu. So I don't know why I say Rue. I think we've just established that we call him Ryu in America, and you just deal with it. He was they Ryu. They certainly in the did in the movie. Yeah. Which oddly enough, Jean Claude Van Damme got closest to the actual pronunciation by having a thick enough accent in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Was Jean Claude Van Damme trying to do an American accent? I hope not. I, I I really hope he wasn't because it wasn't very good. But it's it's one of those things. If that's him trying his best, and I can't tell that he's trying, mm-hmm. that's bad. Yeah. So this being the Street Fighter movie, I was trying to think of like what different ways we could talk about certain scenes in the in the movie, and I think probably some of the best things that we could talk about is now that we've discussed these characters, we need to discuss how they tried to fit their moves <laughs> into into this into this movie because I mean they they definitely tried very hard to make sure they did stuff that was a few of them yeah a few of a them. few I mean Blanca didn't electrify or anything so. Blanca Which, didn't do much anything. Yeah. Dalsim didn't do much anything. Yeah, DJ didn't never stretch. fought. Yeah, DJ didn't fight at all. Uh, Guile definitely does the flash kick several yeah, times. Yeah, he does two of them at least to Bison. Yeah. So Bison uh, doesn't have his like his evil chi darkness whatever, but he does. I mean, have these electromagnetic electro things, so he does be able to do the whole fly across the screen and punch you in the face. It's it's essentially the Psycho Crusher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's even in the movie Bison is cheap. Is what they're trying to say. <laughs> Uh, so Ken and Ryu, between the two of them, I think they hit everything. Yeah, uh, there was one bit in an early fight where where Ru basically does the 
hurricane kick. It's he does yes. a jumping spin kick. Right. Uh, there's one bit in the fight at the end where Ken does a shoryuken, which is like an uppercut where he yeah. kind of yeah, he just he does an uppercut impact. and a spin. Let's not let's not call it shoryuken. Let's just call it what it was. He spun around during an uppercut. Well, if um, you're gonna call it hitting one of the big marks, then yeah, I, I suppose. But that's he. I mean, it was, it was hardly a hadouken, but uh, yeah, you know, no. who does the double palm strike with a big flash that came from somewhere and was completely <laughs> I love, unexplained? I love the flash. I laughed. I laughed. I admit it. I laughed. I'm like, <laughs> like, there's supposed to be something here, but come on, people. We can only push <laughs> you so far. Um, and Ryu also, I think, in that last fight when he was fighting Vega. was it, He was fighting Vega, right? I think so. Yeah, I think he also did like a spinning kick that I sort of took to be the hurricane kick. Yeah. Um, uh, e, e Honda hmm. definitely did like the, the slappy thing. Hmm. I think I somehow missed that one. Yeah, it was it was in uh, when he was fighting with uh, Zangief. Uh huh. And I think that's why how he pushed him through the door, and that's at some point that's how he got away from him. But yeah, he definitely did the slap thing. And now I kept looking for like Chun Li to do something, and other than like maybe kicking a lot of people. Yeah, she didn't do a whole lot. I mean, she just did a lot of kicking. So. Yeah, and that was mostly on Bison in the It Was Tuesday scene. Yeah, well, she kicked some of the uh, some of the goons. She was like trying to. She really let go of that revenge plan pretty quick. Yeah. I gotta say, like when guys was like, was, uh... "I'll take care of him," she's like, "Ah, oh, it's no problem. All right, <laughs> I'm okay." Then uh, Balrog punched people real hard. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Balrog's moves were in there. Uh, let's see. I don't think Zangief really did too much, but most of his stuff's pretty outlandish anyway. Yeah, so. he was he was kind of the comic relief character, but I mean he does he does wrestle. Yeah. So there there was that. Um, T Hawk, as you said, just kind of showed up on super secret boat at the end and then had a gun, I think, or something. Yeah, so. he didn't he didn't know. I mean, even Cammy just had a gun. I don't. Well, there was I don't one know. Bit I don't know. She said thrust kick as she was kicking somebody. Oh, did she do that? I missed yeah, that. Yeah, she just yells it out. Thrust kick! Oh, like you do, you know. Well, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not familiar enough with like her moveset yeah. to know if any of those were actually, like, moves that she does. I it, have to admit. Nothing was anything that uh, really looked like anything she would do in the game, but she, she moves really weird in the game. So, I, I like, if, if Kylie Minogue was trying to do the motions that Cammy does in the game, she would probably have spinal problems to this day. Yeah, so that's that's fair. Uh, that's, I think that's everybody who actually did moves from the game, but nice to see those mm-hmm. in there. Uh, let's see, so let's, I mean, the story-wise, there's not a whole lot to go here. It's, you know, Bison takes over Shadowloo, and then the Allied we, Nation forces... point out the weirdness of his plot. Yeah, so, let's talk about this. This is kind of odd. He wants $20 billion, which doesn't seem like an awful lot of money. I mean, like, obviously that's a lot of money, but, like, for... Somebody who just took over a country, like that's yeah. not actually not actually in a international lot of money. terms. It's not a ton. Yeah, uh, and it was for hostages that no one knows exactly who they were, so we don't know if they had any particular importance. But what's more, he had his own bison dollar currency that he wanted to kidnap the British Queen <laughs> to force them to set to the bison dollar exchange rate to the British pound. Yeah, it, that just felt like he didn't have money, and so he was trying to sort of, like, basically invest in futures, is what was that was all about. It's like, oh, well, you what know. What kidnapping futures doing this week? Yeah, it was, that was a little, uh, so I never really understood, like, he, obviously, his overarching plan was he wanted to make uh, an army of Blancas that were loyal to him so that he could take over the world and thus usher in peace, like you do. Uh, peace and total domination. Yeah, peace and total domination. Which okay, I mean it's a it's a little weird, but I mean it was he, he had justifiable goal. But I don't. I guess the twenty billion dollars would have been to try to keep funding that research and keep buying things. Because yeah, I mean he made it pretty clear like the world condemned me, but your corporations kept selling me stuff. So. <laughs> um, and he well, also was all, paying all the major food chains are going to want to end. Yeah, he's also paying apparently very, very well to in those Bison he was paying. Dollars? Yeah, well, I mean, DJ said he was getting paid really well. You D- got paid? Yeah, <laughs> DJ <laughs> used to work at Microsoft. So. But that was another great line from Zangief. Just yeah, <laughs> he had like no idea he, he was totally the bad guy. Totally bought into Bison's yeah. sanity. Yeah, that was that was beautiful. <laughs> Oh, Zangief. He was and not my favorite character, obviously, but I loved the scenes he was in and was just able to kind of provide. I like the humor. He was a yeah. great comic relief character and used just about the exact right amount. Yeah, he was it done exactly right. 
he looked pretty good too. I mean, we didn't really point this out too much, but like his whole head looked very much like. Yeah, he looked like he looked like saying. I mean, you knew who he was the second oh, yeah. you saw him. You knew who he was. There was no question. I mean, for most of these guys, you sort of you knew who they were as soon as you saw them. I think Honda was probably the least recognizable. Well, and T Hawk because I before well, yeah, I rewatched T- it, I completely T- forgot he was in it. Yeah, T Hawk because I mean he was you know nobody, but and unfortunately, I mean I don't know why T Hawk didn't get the love. DJ you knew because he was just overtly Jamaican. Yeah. Um, but like I don't think he really looked a whole awful lot like DJ other than the long hair in the back. Yeah, yeah. But Zangief looked exactly like Zangief. Yeah. Like like Ryu and Ken, you know who they are because they showed up together. Yeah. I think it introduced individually, you might be a little hard-pressed to say who they were, but when they show up together, you're like, oh, well, obviously, we know who these guys are. It's the Asian guy and the white guy. It's Ryu yeah. and Ken. Yeah. Um, Chun-Li is obviously pretty easy to spot. That, and she does say her name within the first two seconds of showing up on screen. So, Which was, like, the first dialogue in the movie. Yeah. So kind of hard to miss Chun Li. You'd have to be, you'd have to be really, really trying to miss it. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're, going back to to Bison's plan, like, I, was the Bison Bucks thing also just to get more money so that he could, he could I keep don't funding know. it? I, I, don't... I, I think that's yeah. DJ worked at Microsoft. He should understand how this part works. You're just getting stock options in lieu of a better financial compensation on the premise that, well, if we do well, it'll be worth money and you'll get paid better. Yeah, I, I get, I mean, I, I suppose maybe at, at one point in time, you, you'd have to think like the bison bucks must've been what he thought the currency was going to be eventually when he took over the world. Yeah. I, I guess it, it's just another element to paint in, you know, his whole, I'm going to unite the world under my own government, so obviously I'm going to have to have my own currency. It also gave you the sight gag of seeing money with Raul Julia's face on it with the, but oh, that actually reminds me. Did you notice he always has the hat on? He does. Even when he takes it off, it's off screen. When he changes mm-hmm. the color of the hat he's yep. wearing at the tri- I, oh, I love that. that. I love that. that scene. He's just got the whole hat rack, and he's like, I'm just going to switch hats. There you go. Oh, that was... Almost comically oversized hat. Yeah. I, I was kind of a fan of that. <laughs> oh, that was... Because... <laughs> I'm Bison. I wear. It. He, that's his dedication. It's 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 like it's like Carl <laughs> Urban with the is, Judge Dread hat. It's like no, you, you see Bison with the, with the hat. So that's. I'm not going to speak with an Irish accent. I'm not going to have blonde hair. I am going to dress like Bison. Um. So this is the movie. This movie is actually not rated very well, and I think it's like only a twelve percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, but huh. it did it did well financially. I mean, it was it, it made, made it three back. times its budget back. So, yeah. so that's pretty good when you can do it. A lot in the box that was off. international too, and well, you get Jean Claude Van Damme, you're going to get France. So yeah. or not France, or Belgium. Belgium. I'm sorry. He's actually, I've heard the French really like Jean Claude Van Damme. The French do love Jean Claude Van Damme. That's that's true. Uh, I mean, Raul Julia, obviously, he got, he got, I think he, um, he got, you, he got nominated for set the, for the, uh, Saturn Awards for this role, I believe. Yeah. Um, now, we would be remiss if before we, we wrap this up, we did not discuss the video game based on the live action movie. So, Nick, I actually have this on DVD, and this was just, this came from the era when they used to have different editions of DVDs. Mm. So this was, I think mine was the Extreme Edition. Hmm. That was I mean, 90s. Yeah, I remember in the 90s and there, there were editions for these things and it was like so extreme and then it was and I don't know what the difference between like extreme editions and like ultimate editions and then super penultimate editions and then they finally stopped doing that because they realized huh. nobody cared. And huh. Also nobody really wants to uh nobody really wants to buy the same movie more than once. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so they make they they uh they make the DVD. It's the extreme edition, whatever. It's the only one that I could still find in the stores. I don't, I couldn't even find this movie on Blu-ray. Uh, not that I wouldn't buy it, but I just I bought it in DVD because that's what I had. And so it comes with in the special features. And this was like before special features were really big thing. So for deleted scenes, it's got like two scenes, uh, both Chun Li scenes. One is the fight with her and Cammy. So I've seen the fight. Trust me, they did you a favor. And the two was some scene. I, I could see why they cut it. Like some scene showing Chun Li sneaking around after she escaped from the the AN and was trying to get to like Shadowloo City. And it was kind of silly because mm. it's just Chun Li with a blonde wig. <laughs> you understand that, that... this is Southeast Asia, right? If you're trying to blend in, <laughs> you're not going to do it with a big old blonde wig. You're going to stand out a little more. That's Plus, one of those hanging out with the giant really Hawaiian and the other American guy is not helping you either. Like anyway. Uh, let's see, there was a couple of storyboarded things that weren't that good. And then there's, it says, footage from the games. 
And so first I click on the Super Street Fighter one. I'm like, I wonder what this is. And it, it's honestly, it's just like 45 seconds of a fight between Bison and Guile in game. Huh. So then I'm like, so I wonder what they're going to show. For, so then they show the movie one. And it's it's exactly what it is. It's just footage from the movie version of, of the game, or I guess the game version of this movie, however you want to describe it. And it just shows like a bunch of like them doing their moves. Like even to the po- there's a point where they're just doing their moves, but they're not hitting each other because they just want to show the moves off. Mm-hmm. Um, now I never played it. I I did notice a couple of things once they actually started actually showing gameplay. Is that the the movie game had combos uh, that I didn't think Street Fighter had at the time. Yeah, the uh, the Street Fighter the movie the game yeah actually had a somewhat tweaked system so you could do like air juggles and things yeah what i also noticed and this was this was pretty pretty obvious to me having just seen the movies that like so the bison in the in the in the movie game he moved like you know raul julia did or the stunt guy for raul julia did in their scenes like he didn't move like bison people kind of moved like they 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 made it a little bit different than Mm -hmm. and it was it was just it's really weird like kind of Mortal Kombat ish look to it, you know, because they're using yeah, the full motion. Got, yeah, they got they got the the photos. Right. Of, they pr- I, I would guess that during the shooting of the movie, they took photos of the actors for it while they were already in costume, maybe like between scenes yeah. or something. Or maybe I don't it know. Seems like an efficient use of time. Yeah. They I'm also, also just guessing there. They had alternate costumes in that movie. That I think that were game accurate costumes for the characters as well. Mm. I want to say they're alternates where they're game costumes, which I don't know what you do for M. Bison in that case, because he was pretty game accurate already. But Maybe it's his uh, lounging robe. <laughs> his leopard print lounging robe, yeah. I, I just thought that was a little... um. It was odd. I'd never actually played it. I'd heard of it, and I kind of want to play it now, and you really think that's just... Capcom could just pop that into like the PSN or Xbox Live Arcade at some point, and somebody would buy it. <laughs> I Yeah. Yeah, it's so, a, it, the, that that game was was weird. It had a few uh, little tweaks to the system, but it also kind of pointed out that Captain Sawada was supposed to be a significant character because he was a playable character in the game. Huh? If you don't remember, Sawada was the other guy who yeah uh, with with Guile and really sounded like he was dubbed over. Yes. Also but funny, that, I should mention that is uh, the actor's name also Sawada. <laughs> Kenya Sawada was the actor's name. Yeah, he they they did that because you might have noticed that there was a character from Super Street Fighter 2 missing in all of this and that's Fei Long. Fei Long, that's right. And totally they didn't do not him Bruce because, Lee. <laughs> yeah, because he was so Bruce Lee, they just didn't include him. Yeah. And they they swapped things around. I think I think Sawada was supposed to play uh Ryu in the original plans and the guy playing Ryu was supposed to be Fei Long originally. I I can kind of see that. You know, mm. it's yeah. Don't include Fei Long just for that reason. Um, I but, mean, if 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 you're gonna get sued by threatening to have the United Nations in there, then yeah, definitely don't want to get hit for likeness rights on <laughs> by Bruce Lee's estate. Why wasn't it just the American military at that point? I mean, you could just have Cami on loan or you know a liaison or something, and the other named character was T Hawk, and he's American, so yeah. I but then then how's Charlie there? I why does he? Wait, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, right now you can already tell we're putting too much thought into this because way this more not, thought. Yeah. This is not a movie that takes itself seriously. It's not a thinking this man's a movie, movie. Yeah, this is a movie that's silly. It knows it's silly, so they just are silly. They be silly. They have all kinds of silly things in it, like a childlike uh, Zangief saying dumb things. Yeah. You can get away with that in a movie like this. Yes, exactly. Um, so the rating of the movie, I, I, I read something interesting as I was trying to read up for this, but I guess, like, the first cut was R. Oh, you would not want that. Yeah, so and so here's what's really weird. So, like, the the director and writer, they they want they were shooting for PG-13, so they, they made some cuts to, like, and I think that made it PG, to, so like, okay, so we got to <laughs> bump it up to PG-13. So they added an explicative in post-production to bump it up to PG-13. That's that's insane. How, how did it wind up R at first? You really gotta wonder. I mean, like that's it. That, it was clearly wrong. But yeah, how would you make it R? Especially if you can cut it down to PG. Like, <laughs> it must have been just one scene bothered people. But yeah, yeah. maybe there was a scene with Blanca 
openly killing the hostages or something. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That might have happened. Yeah, that whole Blanca thing was really... Did you notice that like they, they did it like, oh, we're uploading evil into his brain, and it's it's a red bar, and then Dawson yeah. <laughs> changes it to be you know images of kids playing and Martin Luther King speeches and whatnot, mm-hmm. and then it continues feeling blue. Yeah. So he was 45% evil and 55% good. <laughs> and and so, and Guile was totally going to shoot him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, maybe maybe that's how they got the R. Oh, that, that would do it. You would think so, right? Because, I mean, that was that was pretty hardcore for a second there. And so maybe yeah. they were like, uh, you know what? No. There was a don't. Pretty, th- when he pulled out the pistol, it's like, that was a really big tone shift. Yeah. Like this, this, this just got real. But, uh, yeah, so I guess maybe probably better the other way. So before we completely uh, go off this movie and start doing the ends, there's one more scene that we have to discuss. That's the very last shot in the regular film where they all do their victory poses. Yeah. Now, there's no reason for them to be doing it. I mean, the thing just blows up, and so they do the victory poses. And now the thing that makes the least sense is Cammy's victory pose. <laughs> she, has, she turns around. Like, you're you're literally not looking at the explosion right now <laughs> while everyone else is, like, doing it. Uh, T-Hawk is... I, I actually don't know if T-Hawk's was accurate, but everyone else looked accurate. Chun-Li did the yeah. jump in the air thing. That must have been hard time. It, it must have... I wonder how many takes that took. There's no way that was a first take thing, obviously. Guile pulled out a comb for some reason. He had the comb and needed to comb it. Oh uh, man, with him they could have at least done the alternate victory pose of him lifting up his uh, his dog tags. Yeah, you know what? At, at this point though, like once once you've decided you're going to do the victory poses for like the the end title shot, just just go for it. You go for the whole way. Fair, like, fair jump enough. in the air, pull out the comb. Everybody, do your thing. I was I I, I should not have expected anything less. The, yeah, the frustrating thing is that Cammy did have a victory pose that would have been more appropriate, too. It's just that that's the one that everyone remembers because yeah. she was a bit fan servicey in the game. A little bit fan servicey. Just a touch. The, the, the ever slightest bit. But anyway, which is why she didn't ever wear anything game accurate because it would have made absolutely no sense given her role as, as a member of the military. Even the, yeah. the handguard things were a little, a bit of a stretch. Yes, yes, but. they were. Because they didn't really seem to serve a purpose, but yeah. So she she does the turnaround thing. And you're like, uh, it it it. Well, everyone else is celebrating. She's turning around, and it seemed a little inappropriate. But you do get to hear her laugh. Is the last <laughs> thing you hear in the movie is Cammy laughing, not counting the stinger. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so that was Street Fighter. So let's let's talk about our favorite parts. Uh, I think we we probably have a decent selection to go from. This is a funny <laughs> film. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you, Nick. What what was your favorite part of Street Fighter? <laughs> It's it's really tricky. I remember when I watched this movie the first time when I was a kid. Like the one thing that really stuck with me was was Zangief's quick change the channel. <laughs> and uh, I'm not. I I I guess I won't have. I can't go with the scene. But as, as uh, watching it again as an adult, just DJ in general. <laughs> you know, like, like Bison, they, they get news that, that Guile was supposed to be dead. And it's like, this is great. Excellent news, boss. On the contrary, I mourn. Okay. <laughs> okay, also, whatever. Yeah, there was a... DJ had a really good scene where Bison's like, we make our last stand here and we will pull down his <laughs> warriors. And DJ's just kind of like slowly backing out of the, out of the room. <laughs> like, okay, I'm You and out. me, DJ. That <laughs> was actually... I had completely forgotten that that scene even existed, and I was just like, yeah. I like, cause like, by I mean, Raul Julia is doing his bison thing, and and DJ is just kind of like looking, like, where's the door? There's the door. I'm out. They, they, See DJ like. Bison, DJ, and Zangief actually had a really good like chemistry together because you had Bison as the absolute insane megalomaniac, and you had Zangief as the childlike innocent who actually buys into that crap, and you have DJ as the only sane one who's there for completely pragmatic reasons yeah. because he's getting paid, and he's just like... I don't want to deal with all of these stupid people. Yeah, was... It's 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 almost like a commentary on a professional working environment. <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah. All right. So that's DJ's DJ's good. I think my favorite scene, and I'm I'm torn because you know it's going to be a Raul Julia scene. There's no way it's not going to be. And I was really torn between the for me it's Tuesday and his why do they call me evil. And, and I really have to go with that when I really thought about it, I have to go with the scene where he's like describing Bisonopolis and why do they call me? Because he's chewing the scenery, like devouring the scenery. 
and he like he's popping his head between the big spillers, <laughs> and he's giving the speech, and then it ends with Zangief going, "That was beautiful." And that was another DJ moment because he looks at him like he's an <laughs> idiot. Yeah, another. I mean, it's it's my the, probably the most entertaining people in the movie all in the same scene, and watching them just do that was was awesome. And so that is easily my favorite scene. So now we got to score this one. Nick, what would you give Street Fighter? Least favorite for this one? What? No, least favorite scene? No, for this least one? favorite for this one. I don't, I don't know. This was a good movie. <laughs> We're not doing a least favorite. No. Anyway, Nick, what would you, what would you, what would you score this movie? Uh, that's, that's a tricky one because yeah. it, it, it's, it's worth watching. It doesn't. I, I do think this movie doesn't necessarily stand up to much in the way of repeating viewing. I actually, similar to Ultraviolet, I actually did another poll for this one. And almost to a person, everyone who'd seen the movie reacted the same way with like a chuckle. It's like, yeah, I saw it once a long time ago or like when it came out. And in a lot of ways, that's probably a really good way to watch this movie. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily call it a perfect movie, but uh, I, I, I think I, I think I would have paid bison about you know 12 billion of the dollars he asked for okay that's i think that's fair i would say when i really think about this movie now this is a movie i thought i was gonna hate because i just remembered not liking it and it turns out i was really entertained by it and i thought it was a great movie so i would say on the blanka mind control scale i would give this movie 75 percent good and 25 percent evil I, I would definitely say part of the part of the evil was Jean Claude Van Damme's die job. Right. I mean, that was Jean Claude Van Damme is part of the evil. Um, the, the Chun Li in like, red. I, that's part of the evil. <laughs> Raul Julia is like seventy percent of the good and the five percent of the other little details. But you, you can't I, you can't dislike this movie. I don't know why I I don't look at it more fondly because I enjoyed it. Uh, I there, enjoyed there's it a lot that. of people who kind of take offense to how generally inaccurate it is to the game, but a lot of those details of the game came out after this movie. That's true, yeah. I mean, as, in terms of the lore, it was actually pretty close to what it was at the time. Fairly. I mean, a, a lot of the stretches were with Ken Ru, Sagat. Like, Sagat yeah. is, was a former fighter. He mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily a Muay Thai fighter. There was no history between him and Ru. All of that part of thing never came up. Right, but really. that was all kind of done just to sort of get everybody in the same place. Exactly. At the same I time. mean, that was that was nakedly done to to include all of the characters in one overarching plot. Yeah. So you can you can kind of forgive it that, especially because, like I said, this movie really does play like an episode of Thunder in Paradise <laughs> yeah. or Super Force, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> wow, wow, it sounds like you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's a hero talk for another time. <laughs> We're not doing a hero talk on Super Force. Uh, anyway, uh, on behalf of my panel, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Nick, thanks for coming on and talking Street Fighter. Always a pleasure. For more podcasts, Let's Plays, articles, videos, reviews, all the good stuff that we produce, you can go to Enthusiacs.com. You can also follow us on Twitter. That is at Enthusiacs. We have a YouTube channel. You can link to it off our site. Uh, our forums are a great place where you can discuss just about anything. And as always, we'll see you right back here on the next Hero Talk. Hero Talk.